Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stefan Achenbach. I'm here with Lawrence Tops to speak about his paper on this use of CT for imaging of the aortic root. Lawrence, can you give us a brief summary of what your paper is about that is going to be published in Jack Cardiovascular Imaging? In fact, I think it's a collaboration between your site and the University of British Columbia. Indeed, we, uh, we had a col uh, collaboration with uh, the group of John Webb. And um, in this study, we, um, we looked at um, the anatomy of the aortic root and we assessed it with 64 slice CT uh, to see what implications um, the assessment of aortic root anatomy has on performing percutaneous aortic valve replacement. Um, we looked in um, uh, a group of 169 patients referred for coronary angiography with 64 slice CT and we um, assessed uh, standard aortic root parameters. So what were, what were the basic findings of your study and especially what are the difference between patients who have a normal aortic valve and those who have aortic valve stenosis? Well, um, we assessed um, standard measurements on aortic annulus diameter and the distance between the aortic annulus and the ostium of the left and the right coronary arteries. And what we noticed was that in the patients with aortic stenosis, um, the, the amount of patients in which the distance between the aortic annulus and the ostium of the left coronary artery was um, significantly lower in, um, in re with uh, regard to uh, the patients without aortic stenosis. So you say that there's a, 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 a a lower distance between the valve and the ostium, and is there a danger that this might cause complications during the procedure? Indeed, we, uh, we saw that this distance was lower, and um, this may have implications when you actually are going to perform the procedure, since it may increase the risk of occlusion of the coronary artery. You have told me before that you are performing actually uh, percutaneous aortic valve replacement at your institution. And do you use CT now to, to modify the procedure according to the CT results? Yes, we do. We, um, we perform uh, routinely um, multi-slice CT before the procedure. And um, we find it very helpful in um, sizing um, the prosthesis. Uh, so deciding what prosthesis size we choose. And also we, we determine um, if there may be a potential risk for occlusion of the coronary artery. That's very interesting, but do you have to use cardiac CT to do these examinations? Aren't there other imaging modalities like echo, magnetic resonance, maybe plain fluoroscopy that would also give us the same information? Oh, absolutely. These imaging modalities are very helpful in planning and performing these procedures as well. But we find it very helpful that multi-slice CT is an actual 3D imaging technology where you can reconstruct um, the aortic root in a three-dimensional way to assess the, uh, the annulus and uh, the coronary ostia. So you would be of the opinion that it actually gives information that is so accurate that it is worth the expense in radiation and contrast to do CT as opposed to other imaging tests? Um, yes, yeah. And in addition, we, we can also get information on the coronary arteries and on the aortic root um, uh, to plan uh, those procedures. Uh, for example, if we find extensive calcifications um, in the aortic root traject, then we, we could decide to do a transapical approach, yes. So that's very interesting. It seems that CT can almost serve as a one-stop shop imaging procedure to provide all relevant information prior to aortic valve replacement in these patients. Indeed, yes. Yes, it can. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lawrence, for this interview. It was very interesting to speak to you. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention.